Hey everybody, my name is Justin. I'm a part-time reseller located here in St. Louis. Every week I bring you a video that talks through uh, everything that I've bought and sold on eBay for the week. And so I go around to thrift stores and flea markets and garage sales and I buy things cheap and I flip them online for a profit. But I do this part-time, so I have a full-time job. And so these weekly videos that I do try to show what's possible doing it in a part-time capacity. This, this week's video, this one's a little bit different though. Today I'm gonna walk you through Airtable. Uh, Airtable is the software that I use to manage my inventory and sales data. And so a lot of people use um, Excel to do this or like Google Spreadsheets to do this, which is totally fine. You can use that. Airtable is a little bit more advanced. It's sort of like spreadsheet technology paired with database functionality. And so it allows you to, to, to do a, like a little bit more advanced um, data tracking and sort of uh, manipulation of data. And I'm going to walk you through my setup that I use uh, to manage all of my inventory and sales data in Airtable. And so that's what you're looking at right now is Airtable. Uh, the way it works is there's basically um, tables. And so these are similar to like sheets in Microsoft Excel or, or uh, Google Docs. And so that, across the top here, you have just different tables. You'll see I have a lot here. I have like five of them. I'm only going to talk through the first two because that's really the only two that are necessary to to run how I run my inventory and sales data. So I have a receipts table that holds all of my receipts data, and I have an inventory table which holds all of my inventory data. And so a receipt in my system is really defined as anytime I go and make a purchase at a store or at a garage sale. And so you'll look here, these are all my receipts. Looks like I've had about 382 receipts since I started using it, and they're all based on like a single day's uh, of, of purchase. And so when I go to a flea market, um, you know, I'll basically create a new receipt um, and then I add a bunch of inventory in the inventory table and I associate it with this receipt. So you can see here on the 12th of June, which was two days ago on Sunday, I went to a flea market and I bought four items and I spent 13 total dollars and there's an eBay list value of $102 for those um, four items that I bought. And it looks like out of the four, I've already sold one of them uh, and I have three of them left. I also have some, some functionality, which I'll walk through later about how I do that to sort of project how much I'm going to gross uh, on um, once everything sa sells, uh, what I've actually grossed, uh, and then what I've actually uh, taken home the net uh, so far. So it looks like I've sold, I don't even know what this is that I sold, it was a very cheap item, uh, but I've already made half my money back on that, so uh, not bad. So uh, again, receipts, uh, the receipts table is meant to house uh, receipts, you know, everything, um, every purchase that I make basically. Um, for garage sales, you know, I just basically do one receipt per day. So I might go to like 10 different garage sales but I just have one receipt for a garage sale. This was on Saturday. It looks like I bought eight items for $42 and has a total list value of $435. And I've sold two of those and have six of them left. And then you can see here, that's the actual inventory that I um, have as a part of it. We'll go that to a second. Uh, but if you scroll down, you'll also see that I have like store specific um, receipts. And so right here, Salvation Army in Arnold. This is a, a thrift store that I go to pretty often. Um, and so every time I go to that thrift store, I, it gets an actual receipt. Uh, so this, all of these receipts are used to not only like give me the data that I need to track performance and sales data over time, but it's also good for tax purposes later uh, because I can go back and see how much I spent. And that's, that's my, my ledger, my record of, uh, of what I've bought and sold uh, over time. And so that's basically how that part of it works. Uh, and then I have the inventory. And so this is the bulk of... Um, the bulk of the data is in inventory here, and you'll see here on uh, Airtable, it looks a lot like a spreadsheet. Again, you know, I've got uh, rows and columns, and those are filled with uh, all sorts of different things here. Um, but you'll see as I dig in, it's quite a bit different than, um, than a simple spreadsheet. And so this is like all active inventory that we're looking at right now. And so you'll see I have 1,627 records. That's everything that is listed somewhere. Uh, most, you know, 99% of it's on eBay. Um, and then uh, uh, that is unsold. So it has, hasn't sold yet, it's all active. Um, you can also have a different view here. So, so Airtable's uh, basically, uh, I, I've talked through tables, uh, which are, are different sets of data. And then on each table, you have a view. And so you can create all sorts of views and you can think of views as basically a way to, um, to effectively like, um, uh, 
manage the data to display it in different ways. And so this view is really just like the simple spreadsheet looking view, but you can have all sorts of different views. And in fact, one of my favorite views is this like picked for shipping view here. Um, and so what this means is when something sells, I go into uh, all active inventory here and I can click search and I go here and let's say, I don't know, um, oops, oh my gosh, my microphone's getting in the way here. There we go. Let's say a Yankee candle. Okay, so let's say this sold. So basically every morning we have a list of things that have sold on eBay. We go through and we hit uh, picked for shipping right there. And basically what that does is it flags that item as something that is ready to be shipped. And so let's say we had 10 sales, we go through and, and collect 10, and then we go over to this picked for shipping view and you're gonna see everything that we just said. And I have this view set up to show only a, a couple of things. So it shows the location. Um, this one, I don't know why this one doesn't have a location. I think it's because it hasn't been put into invent or put in my inventory yet. I'll talk through that in a second. So for example, these glasses that I sold, the location is mugs. That's what I call a shelf that all of my mugs sit on. And then a custom SKU if I have one. I don't use custom SKUs for everything, but if I did, it would show up here. That just makes it, again, this view is specifically used for me holding my phone as I walk around my inventory and find all of the items that have sold. So that's all the information that, that is going to show there. Uh, let me hop back into um, active inventory and unpick that because I actually did not sell that Yankee candle home thing. Um, so that's just, you know, that's, that's one view here um, of how, how I use it to, to pick for shipping. Uh, I also have this view here as needs to be listed. And so this is a very common view that I use on my inventory table here. And this is when I'm going through and I'm listing items on eBay. Um, I, I use this very often. This is how I get the item uh, into my own inventory to track. And so let's just walk through it really quick how I would do that. I would say item number one um, and then... I can give it a custom SKU here if I want. I'm not going to give it a custom SKU, but you know, I use these for like clothing um, that I bag into poly bags and I give like a four digit SKU and then I put that sticker on the actual bag and I put it into the custom SKU item in eBay and then also custom SKU here so that when it sells, I have an easy time to find it. Uh, but once I put in the item uh, uh, name there, then I associate it with a receipt. So I go through and I, I say, okay, well, where did I actually buy this? And so if I've already created a receipt for that, let's say it came from this flea market, I just select the receipt there. Uh, then I input the cost, so how much I paid for it. So let's say I paid $5 for it, and then I put the list date. So let's say I listed it today, and then the total list price. So this is the price that I listed it plus shipping. So let's just say it was, I don't know, $49.99 total. Uh, and then automatically it's going to estimate the, uh, the net on that. And so, is that net? I forget, yeah. So estimate the net. And so on average, I make about 60% of the total sale price in net I take home. And so this estimated net is just a formula here. And so if I customize field type, you see I have a field type of formula and I just, it's very similar to, you know, the spreadsheet where I have the list price, the $49.99 uh, minus the cost. So that's minus the cost of goods and then times 0 0.60 as 60%. So that is just going to give you an estimated net. It's, you know, it's not always accurate. It's, it's close enough though. It's just like, it's, I put it there so it's easy for me to say, okay, like when I sell this, eventually I'm going to take home 25 bucks. Cool. Um, and then I have location. And so typically what I do is I do not fill out the location as I'm adding it here. Um, because uh, what that's going to do is I have a different view called needs binning here. Um, and so this, this is a list of everything that I've put into inventory but have not yet placed onto a shelf. And so this makes it easy. I have a pile of stuff uh, on a cart. Uh, that after I list it, I just put it on that cart and that, that is my to be listed cart. And all of that is going to be reflected in this view of needs binning. So this, this view just shows everything that has been listed, but does not have a location. So let's go, oops, let's go through here, um, and finish this up. Uh, and let's say we're going to put it on the market here of eBay. I also sell in some other places, but 99% of what I sell is on eBay. So we'll put it to eBay there. And you'll see when I do that, it turns orange and it disappears uh, because it's no longer something that needs to be listed. It is now listed and it's in the uh, active inventory. If we could see it, uh, I could click there and we'd see it there, but I'm gonna actually go over to the needs binning. And you'll see here, I have it now under needs binning. So this is another view that I use. Uh, I walk around with my phone and I have my cart filled with stuff that needs to go on a bin. And when I'm walking around, I say, okay, I'm gonna put this one in 
bin, let's see, let's say E3B. Uh, and so that's the location. You'll see I'll close it out and it's going to disappear from there because it's already been bent. And so now it is now uh, purely on all active inventory here. So there we go. Item number one, E3B. And again, like I said earlier, uh, what I can do is when this item eventually sells, I'll find it and I'll uh, mark it as picked for shipping and it will show up on picked for shipping there. And there it is. That's the full life cycle of everything that we do uh, using Airtable from sort of listing all the way to shipping. Uh, and then once it actually uh, is sold and we're sell you know, selling it, uh, we open this up like this from the picked for shipping and we input all of the extra data, uh, the sales data. And so we do all this manually. We don't pull any data from eBay. Uh, but so I'll, you know, let's say it sold today, sold date, and it sold on eBay, and let's say it sold for $49.99. That's the sold price, that's the actual sale price plus the amount that the person paid for shipping. Um, and then I import the fees, and so I just look at, um, you know, there's a screen on eBay that shows all of your transactions and the fees that they charge. Let's say it's $4.12, I'm just guessing. And then I put in the amount that I paid for shipping, and so let's say I paid, I don't know, eight fifty to ship this. And then you'll see it does all the calculations. It says net income, $32.37. That's how much we took home after it sold and after our fees and after our cost of goods. You'll see here days to sell. Uh, this one, because I have it listed on the 14th and sold on the 14th, it took zero days to sell. So it sold same day. But let's say I had listed this on the 1st and it took and sold it on the 14th. There you go. It'll say 13 days to sell. Uh, to sell. Uh, and then I have uh, an ROI calculation, just so I know what my return on the investment is. Uh, and, and I also calculate some other things for some purposes of, of data and, and graphing, which I'll show here in a second. Um, so here we go, the sold month year, you know, that's the actual year that it sold, and I'll show you what that means in a second. The gross income it calculates. So gross income is really just the net plus the cost of goods. So gross income is like the total amount of cash coming back into my account. Uh, so that's a, I like using that even more than net uh, because it just shows how much cash is flowing back um, uh, regardless of how much I spent to get it. And then, and then the estimated net, so you can see here, the estimated net, uh, which again was that calculation I showed earlier, is $26.99, but the actual net was $32.37. So uh, it, it performed above average in terms of, of ROI, 640, 647%, so slightly above average in ROI. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that that's about it for like when something sells, what else can I show you here? Um, so the views, you can just create all sorts of views and manipulate the data to do all sorts of things. And so here's a view I use a lot, sold in the last week. And so over the last seven days, here's all of the items that have sold. I use this view to do my weekly sell videos. So it's nice, this just is a running tally of everything over the last seven days that have sold. And so for uh, today's Tuesday, so since last Tuesday, I sold 43 things. Uh, looks like the uh, days to sell on that was on average 87 days, but you can see across all of this, you know, each each one, how long it took for each one of those to sell. You can see the cost, and you can see all the data that's uh, that shows up there. But I can, you know, change all of this on a per view basis, and so I can hide certain fields here. Like let's say I don't want to see days to sell. Let's take that off. Okay, well I actually do want that, so I'm gonna put it back. Um, and then you can you can filter it with all sorts of different rules here. And so in order to get this view of sold in the last week, um, I have uh, some some rules here where sold date is on or before today and sold date is on or after eight days ago. So that should actually be seven. I don't know why that's eight. Uh, I'll change that later. Uh, I also have a view here of listed in the last week. And so I use this to kind of keep track of how much inventory I'm listing on eBay because I try to list 70 things per week because that, you know, eBay likes it when you're constantly listing stuff. And so I check this listed in the last week, uh, usually at the end of the week, just to see how I'm doing. Uh, and it's Tuesday now and it's not very good. I've only listed 24 things in the last week. And so uh, the total list value of that, those uh, has, has $1,000. Really, that should be about double of that based on where it is in the week. So, I, you know, truth be told, have been pretty busy and have not listed as much as I probably should. Uh, let's go through some of these other views that I created. One of my favorite ones here is active by location. And so this is really good for like managing your inventory. And so this is showing all things that have not yet sold um, and then ordering it by the location in my inventory. And so I'm gonna scroll down here and so A1A. So on my A shelf, 
um, there's a box on the first level, so that's A1, and then the, it's the first box, so A1A. Uh, this is everything that should be in that A1A box that I have not yet sold. So it makes it really easy for me to just jump in there, pull that box, go through it, and make sure everything's in there, and you know, weed out some old stuff that's been in there. Because look, I can also, this is not showing here right now, but oh yeah, it is, age. Um, and so I can see here, A1A has a lot of really old stuff in it. And so, you know, the stuff, especially like 564 days, like, you know, I don't, I'm probably not going to sell this thing. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should just donate it back and free up some space. There's a lot of stuff that I got 400 some days ago. Uh, and so A1A, obviously it's like, um, early in my inventory and creation process, uh, physically. And so it has a lot of old inventory, uh, but I could go down here and just see, okay, C3B is a pretty empty box. Let's go through it. Uh, it's a lot of old stuff too. So maybe we should go through and just clean out all of that stuff. So this active buy uh, location is a pretty cool view to use. Um, I also use it, you know, just to track stuff over the year. So here's everything so far that I've sold on eBay in 2022. So we're about halfway through the year. Looks like I've sold 1,136 things. The average cost of everything that I've sold is $4.08. The gross sale that I've made so far on eBay is $41,904. And the net income that I've taken home from that is $24,237. So actually that's pretty good, I would say, because the first half of the year is definitely slower than the second half of the year. Q4 around Christmas is the, the busiest time. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with 24,000. I can, I should expect to net probably definitely over 50,000 because I'm definitely going to do better in the second half of the year than the first half. And again, that gross income. So that's how much cash I'm taking back in. That is the net plus the cost of goods. So I've had $28,000 of cash coming back into um, my accounts this year so far. Also the average ROI, 867. So not bad. Uh, what else could I show you here? There's probably a lot. I know I honestly, I didn't plan for this video. I just sort of hit go on the record on recording and, and started talking about it, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of what you can do with Airtable. It's definitely a lot more advanced than, than Excel and it makes a, makes uh, data visualizations and things like that a lot easier. Speaking of data visualizations, one, I'll show you that before I leave here. You open up this apps and I have a, a bunch of um, basically performance graphs that I use. Uh, this is net sales per month. And so I can very quickly see just over time what my net income over month by month has been since I started using the system, which was back in November of 2020. Um, so you can see this month right here, I've netted so far, well, it's halfway through the month and it's 1,323. It's pretty low actually. Um, you know, if, if it's halfway and I double this, that's only $2,600 a month and that's just not a whole lot. In fact, it's going to be my worst month since June of, of last year. So that's interesting. I guess June is really just not a great month for me. But, you know, having this data uh, makes it easier to sort of, uh, you know, accept that and be like, okay, well, June's going to be a little bit slower. That's fine or like work, work a lot harder. If I have the time, I can really push to get some stronger inventory in June because traditionally it's going to be, uh, to be slower. So um, I also have the like same graph for gross income. Looks like gross income, I've, I've brought in $1,629. Total gross for the month here, you know, I've sold $2,400 worth so far on eBay this month. I have just like this chart is just breaking down um, sales per day. And so that's actually not that useful because you can see it's pretty evenly split. Uh, Monday is the biggest day. Uh, probably, I don't know why that is. That's interesting. But either way, it looks like a Trivial Pursuit uh, game piece and is not super useful, but there, there it is. All right, I think that's it. You can ignore these tables up here. I use that just as regular spreadsheet stuff. I use it to track my expenses, so things that I buy uh, for um, for the business that I'm gonna write off later. In fact, this just reminded me here, Airtable. I pay $240 a year for Airtable, uh, which is quite a bit, I'll admit, but it's a write-off and I like having good data and I like having good tools, so it works for me. Uh, you can use Airtable for free, but they only give you a thousand records uh, to use. And so obviously, like if you look at all inventory here, this is sold and active since I started using it. I have well over a thousand, I have you know, 5,100 records. So I, I have to use their, their lowest tier of, of paid services. 240 bucks a, a year, you know, it's expensive, but I think it's worth it. Maybe you will too. Uh, again, you could use Excel if you wanted to. You're probably going to not get as much like advanced functionality, but it's going to do the job if you want. 
All right, that's it. Feel free to ask you know questions. I'm happy to answer questions in the comments. Uh, so yeah, fire away. Thanks. Bye.